It was a clash of wills in the center of Istanbul on Tuesday. Riot police with tear gas, rubber bullets and water cannons swept through Taksim Square and anti-government protesters fought back. In the past two weeks, protests have spread to 78 cities and towns, leaving at least four people dead and more than 5,000 people have been injured. CCTV's Mikhail Bardavid joins us live with the very latest on the situation there. Mikhail. Well, Elaine, first of all, do not be fooled by the calm background of Karakir that you see behind us. We were supposed to be in Taksim Square filming right now, but the street right next to the studio, um, a fire broke out, so we weren't able to enter there. That basically gives you an idea of what the atmosphere was like in Taksim. It was basically like a war zone. Police used um, gas bombs, tear gas all night long, water cannons all night long. Some of the protesters responded with Molotov cocktails as well as bricks and stones that they can find in the area. In Gezi Park, of course, thousands were trapped right next to Taksim Square, where they had been, of course, camped out for days now. They were also affected by the, the, the incredible amount of tear gas. It was like there was a cloud over Gezi Park and Taksim Square uh, from gas today. Tension is incredibly high. Taksim actually looks like a construction site right now because their trucks trying to move, trying to um, take away the barricades, that the makeshift barricades that were created by the protesters um, to open the blocks that they had created, uh, the roadblocks that they had created. So the tension is very, very high at the moment there. Let's take a look at how the day developed. Taksim, the main stage of the protests, was in flames on Tuesday. Police forces battled protesters all day. They tried to disperse crowds with tear gas and water cannon. The resistance became violent. A few protesters throwing Molotov cocktails at police. In the initial surprise assault on the square, police said they were there only to take down banners hanging down from buildings. But their action quickly became more aggressive. The police promised they would not enter Gezi Park, where the initial protests started and where many are camped out. But the assault on the adjacent square continued. The tear gas is overwhelming. It burns to breathe and very difficult to keep your eyes open. Despite that, protesters seem determined to keep fighting for their cause. A leader of the Taksim Solidarity Platform fought back tears, gasped for air as she tried to read a statement from the activists. Where police blockades are present, it is not possible to talk of democracy, of dialogue. The police intervention comes a day before Prime Minister Erdogan was expected to meet with protesters. Although it is not clear who he aims to meet, since the protesters do not have a clear formalized leadership. With the Gezi Park as a cover story, a big game is trying to be played in Turkey. The Gezi Park protesters are trying to cause heavy damage to Turkey's economy. By placing an environmental label on the package, there are some who are trying to slow down the growing and strengthening of the Turkish economy. The whole nation seems to be transfixed, watching TV screens, witnessing the unprecedented escalation of violence and opposition to the Turkish government. At the moment, Turkey appears to have settled into a dangerous stalemate between the government and protesters. And Mikhail, you know, this has been going on for two weeks now. Any idea how this situation and when it can be resolved? Well, Elaine, as we just mentioned in the package, Prime Minister Erdogan is supposed to meet with some protesters tomorrow on Wednesday. However, after all this violence, we don't know, of course, if this meeting will take place. Um, but Prime Minister Erdogan's attitude, he has shown no sign of willingness to negotiate with the protesters. He has continued to, he has reiterated the fact that the, uh, the project, the main project that sparked the protests in the first place is going to move forward. He has continued to call the protesters extremists. Instead of calming the situation down, he's been increasing the tension all along. Another question is, of course, who would he meet with? The, the protesters do not have any leaders uh, that represent them, basically. So even if this meeting does take place, how much effect it would have is questionable. And so basically, it seems the only solution would be for Prime Minister Erdogan to change his attitude. So if he wants change, he's got to change himself. But however, today, a very interesting thing happened. During his meeting, he said, 
this is Erdogan and he is not going to change. You mentioned that the protesters don't feel understood. Who are they and what do they want? Well, basically, they're a very mixed group of people. Um, they don't belong to a specific group or organization. They have different cultural backgrounds, educational backgrounds, socioeconomic levels are completely different. Uh, but it seems they are all frustrated with Prime Minister Erdogan, his way of leadership, not just the ruling Ak Party, but him and specifically his leadership. They're calling him authoritarian and divisive, actually. And they basically want, are asking, demanding his change his, in the way he leads the country. All right, Mikhail Vardavid, we appreciate your report from Istanbul. Thank you.